In this first video, let's talk about reductio ad absurdum versus straw man versus red herring. There is this episode in the sitcom The Big Bang Theory where the character Sheldon says, He's engaging in reductio ad absurdum. It's the logical fallacy of extending someone's argument to ridiculous proportions and then criticizing the result, and I do not appreciate it. People in the comments section are actually debating whether what Sheldon says is correct or not. Specifically, these comments are talking about reductio ad absurdum versus straw man. So let's take a look at the definitions first. Reductio ad absurdum is a form of deductive logic which one can use to disprove an opponent's argument. Its usage is generally represented as follows. To prove P, we would assume the opposite of P, and then we argue that the opposite of P would lead to Q. And given Q is false or impossible or highly unlikely or morally unacceptable, therefore we can say that the opposite of P is false, and therefore P must be true. Let's take a look at an example. If we are to argue Earth isn't flat, we can assume the opposite, which is Earth is flat. And if Earth is flat, then people could fall off or jump off the edge into deep space, which is clearly absurd. Therefore, Earth is flat is false. Hence, Earth isn't flat. And now let's take a look at straw man. By definition, a straw man argument is a caricature of your opponent's argument. It is an exaggerated or distorted version of your opponent's argument. And the straw man fallacy would refer to when we use a straw man argument to attack our opponent's original argument. For instance, if my opponent is proposing to allow our school cafeteria to sell beer at lunch and I want to attack that position, I can say, no, any school with unrestricted access to intoxicants loses its work ethic and goes only for immediate gratification. We cannot sell beer to students at lunch on campus. So it may sound like I am attacking my opponent's proposition, but I am actually attacking an exaggerated version of it in order to refute his position. So now, with these definitions and examples in mind, let's take a look at that Big Bang episode again. Sheldon says, well, our earthquake supplies, we have a two-day, two-man kit. And so if there is an earthquake and there's three of us here, we could be running out of food by tomorrow afternoon. At this point, Sheldon's logic is completely sound. He is making a valid argument, his premise is declarative and factual, and his conclusion is logical. But then Leonard says, I'm sorry, are you suggesting that if we let Penny stay, we might succumb to cannibalism? So here, Leonard is distorting Sheldon's argument, because at this point, Sheldon didn't actually say anything about cannibalism. Leonard is saying that he is exaggerating and stretching Sheldon's point of running out of food into cannibalism. So this is clearly a straw man argument. Leonard has created a straw man, a character argument, on the basis of Sheldon's original point. So now, at this point, Sheldon should have said, no, that's not what I'm saying, your argument is a straw man. But instead, Sheldon actually says, no one ever thinks it's gonna happen until it does. By saying this, Sheldon is actually confirming that the cannibalism argument actually is what he meant to imply, that he is proposing the notion that if Penny stays, they may succumb to cannibalism. And this gives Leonard the ammunition to attack Sheldon's position using reductio ad absurdum. And that's exactly what Leonard did. Leonard says to Penny, Penny, if you promise not to chew the flesh of our bones while we sleep, you can stay. But it is important to note that in this example, Leonard's engagement in reductio ad absurdum is only made possible by his prior use of the straw man argument and successfully tricking Sheldon to buy into that straw man argument. Had Sheldon immediately identified Leonard's straw man, it would have been much more difficult for Leonard to effectively use reductio ad absurdum to refute Sheldon's position. So this far we've tried to clear up the issue of reductio ad absurdum versus straw man. What about red herring? A red herring argument is one that is being introduced into a debate, usually in a sneaky and covert manner, meant to incite controversies and get people excited and heated up, and thereby diverting attention away from the opponent's argument. Obviously, the red herring should be somewhat related to the main issue being debated, otherwise people would realize that the subject is being arbitrarily changed. For example, if we are debating about the relative safety levels of different car brands, a red herring issue could be which cars are manufactured here in America by American workers contributing to the American economy. People can get excited about that topic very quickly. Or another example, if we are debating political issues surrounding the South China Sea Islands or the China-Indian border dispute, a red herring issue which can easily be sneaked into debate could be patriotism or loyal support for one's motherland. These are issues and topics which can easily and quickly heat up the debate. 
As such, red herring is easily confused with and closely related to straw man because many times a straw man argument, this character argument which is constructed by exaggerating our opponent's original argument, needs to be a bit of a red herring too. And again, the reason for that is a red herring argument is controversial and it can get people excited and heated up. Look at Leonard's straw man argument in our early example, cannibalism. I believe most people would agree that this is, by definition, a straw man argument. But at the same time, one can also argue it is a bit of a red herring, because it is controversial, it's scary, and it worked. And the reason it worked, or at least part of the reason that the straw man argument worked, intriguing Sheldon, was because it was also a bit of a red herring. So, in conclusion, a straw man argument is an exaggerated version or a distorted version of our opponent's argument. A red herring, on the other hand, is an argument which can easily get people excited and emotional and can heat up the debate, which is being introduced sneakily into a debate in order to divert attention. There are similarities and differences between the two. In both cases, we're trying to get the audience to focus on something other than our opponent's original argument. We're trying to do that by getting them to focus on either an exaggerated or distorted version of our opponent's argument, a straw man, or we're trying to get them to focus on something controversial, emotional, and sensitive, which would be a red herring. We can also look at it like this. When we use a straw man argument, we're simply taking our opponent's argument and stretch it so that it is easier to attack. We put words in their mouth and then we attack those words. When we use a red herring, we don't necessarily put words in their mouth, but we introduce a new subject into the mix to divert attention. And this new red herring subject or argument is usually something that can easily get people's attention. Something controversial, something politically sensitive, something emotional, something religious, whatever. The point is to distract and divert attention. Both straw man and red herring are generally considered logical fallacies, although they can also be very effective debate strategies. In fact, most logical fallacies can be intentionally used as debate tactics, but we'll probably talk about that in another video. Now, reductio ad absurdum, as I pointed out earlier, when correctly used, is a form of deductive logic. But when it is incorrectly used, it becomes a logical fallacy, which may involve the straw man or the red herring. All right, so this is how I view reductio ad absurdum versus straw man versus red herring. Feel free to agree or disagree, but in either case, thank you so much for watching this Renewaze random video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.